Slate coasters, a simple first or second project. Being new to the Bolt, it's an easy project. Gives us an opportunity to try a few of the functions and features we've learned so far in Lightburn, as well as some of the features we've unlocked on the Bolt. So let's create a simple design and engrave a slate coaster. Today on LaserNug. So we're gonna be working with a standard four inch slate coaster. You can get them pretty much anywhere and they're pretty common. You've seen probably a ton of videos on YouTube about it. It's a four inch coaster, but I've already measured it and the workable or the open surface area for engraving is three and a half inches. So we'll keep that in mind. I just grabbed myself a simple graphic off of the internet that was free, nothing fancy. Since it's not a light burn file right now, it's only an SVG file. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this to open up vector files for me. And you'll see right here, I've got a simple cabin. Let's click on that and let's open it in Lightburn. And of course you can create whatever design you want, whether it's just text or if you've got some SVG pictures or anything that you want to bring in. If it's anything other than a .svg or it's already a Lightburn file, in other words, if you've got a picture or a graphic or text that's in a JPEG or a PNG form, you're going to need to go through a different process because you need to create a vector file out of it first and we're not doing that today. So if you're doing anything other than simple text, in other words, you'd like to put a graphic into your simple design today, make sure that it is a .svg file for sure. So here's my simple cabin and it was free. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go down to the bottom toolbar and I'm going to click the black color. This is going to give it a fill layer. If I go to the top right here, you'll see in my cuts and layers window, I could make it a line, i.e. I could cut material with it or I could leave it as a fill. We're just going to fill it today and we'll set our parameters in a minute. I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller right now. And somewhere on my desktop, I need to make a circle, or at least for me I do. As I'm learning, I found it very helpful to try to create a reference so I know roughly what size or exactly what size I'm going to be working within. So given that I'm working with a circle on the slate coaster, I know it's 3.5 inches in diameter. I'm going to go over here to the left toolbar and I'm going to click on the circle shape. And I want to create a 3.5 inch circle. This way I know what area I'm able to work with as I create my graphic. If I click on my workspace and I just try to create a circle, you'll see that whichever way I drag it, it's no longer a circle. I need a perfectly symmetrical circle. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to do it again. You want to hold your shift key down, click and create your circle. And what that's going to do is that's going to maintain a perfect ratio or the diameter of your circle. It'll be perfectly round. While it's highlighted here, what I want to do is I'm going to go down again to the bottom of my screen and I go to the far right of my colors and you'll see there are two here that start with the letter T for tool. I'm going to click that and now you'll see that my circle changed to an orangey red. And if you look to the top right under my cuts and layers, you'll see that I've created a tool layer. This is otherwise called a frame. It's been very handy for me while I'm learning because it helps to create a reference and your frame layer will not engrave or cut when you send the file to the bolt. It's just simply there, I think, for a reference. I can see it, but it won't cut and it won't etch it. Now that I still have it highlighted, you'll see I'm going to come up here to the top toolbar and towards the left side, you'll see width and height. You'll also see a padlock right beside it. In this case, I want to keep this padlock closed or locked that will maintain the ratio of the circle no matter what I change. I'm going to go into width. I know that my printable area is 3.5 inches. I create 3.5 and you'll see it automatically change the height to 3.5. I now know the space or I have a reference of what space I have to work with. I want to just take a moment to increase my workspace here so I can see it a little easier. So I have my reference circle done. I'm going to go back up here to the left side top of the toolbar and I'm going to click my selection tool. I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab my little smoky cabin in the woods here. And what I want to do is I want to move it up to my circle. 
you can see already it's way too big. <laughs> so I'm going to grab one of the corners and I want to bring it down to a smaller size. Something that fits a little better. And I'll just move it over here for now. In my case, I'm going to do the classic life is better at the cabin. <laughs> you see them everywhere. So we're going to do one of those. I'm going to go to the left here on my text tool halfway down the A. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to create life is better. Okay, I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I'm just going to grab that, move that over here for now. And being text, if I want to, I can sneak up top and I can change the font. You'll see here right in the top of your toolbar in the middle, you'll see font. And what's pretty cool is as you scroll, you can see what it looks like. Actually, that's not a very good thing. Let me grab this and move it over so we can see it better. So we know life is better. And I want to pick uh, some kind of font that makes sense or looks nice. Here, we'll pick this one, Damascus. And now that I still have this highlighted, you'll notice that when you're using fonts or you're doing any type of text, you'll see there's a little purple dot. And if you cursor over that, you'll see that it gives you a little arc. What that allows you to do is it allows you to bend the text. So I'm going to bend it a little bit, but I also need to make it smaller because I want it to fit on my coaster. So I'm going to go back down here, move this guy out of the way. I'm going to grab my life is better, bring it down a bit. And I'm going to bend it a little more. And I'm actually going to shrink that font a little bit. It's a little too big for me. So if I come back up to the top of the menu, there's a height button. And I'm going to start to decrease that until I like the way it looks. There we go. Now I can come back down and I can place it a little bit easier right there. While it's highlighted, I'm going to create another layer for it. So I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to make this a blue layer. It again, if you look in the top right, I've created it as CO1. It's a fill again. And we'll leave it at that for now. I think it's in a pretty good spot. Got it at the top. Looks like it's pretty well centered. And I'm going to create another text window. And this is going to be at the I'm going to go back up to my selection tool so I can grab it and move it over here. And I'm going to make this a different font just because I can. There you go. Make it a little bigger so I can see it better. Let's grab it and drop it down here. We're going to make that a little smaller. Okay, and we'll drop it right there. In fact, we'll move it. We'll make it just a wee bit smaller. Let me grab my cabin. I'm going to put them right here. And then we'll make one more text box. I'm going to say cabin. Okay, back to my selection tool at the top left. And let's make this different font, something maybe a little bolder. Uh, well, that looks all right. Let's use that one. I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to put this guy down here. Let me move this guy again. Okay. And I think we're good. Cabin is the same color as the rest of my words, so I know they're all in the same fill layer. 
Looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to share my settings with you. So you folks know that I've done a number of different coasters, trying out different settings for both the speed, power, and DPI settings. These may not be the most perfect settings, but if you're like me, you just want some kind of settings that you know you can feel comfortable with before you start using the laser. Because personally, I don't have an appreciation yet for how powerful 100% is versus 30%. I also know that depending on the types of material you use, it's possible that if you have too much power and not enough speed, you could start a fire on woody type products. So until I get a good comfort feeling or a good comfort level of what generally are safe power and speed settings, I'm trying to find indications from other YouTube videos. And that's exactly what I've done here. I have tested speed and power between 400 millimeters per second and anywhere from 15 to 30% power. I'll show you what I've got here and what I've come up with because it seems to work pretty good. I'm gonna go on my first fill layer. That was the cabin. I'm gonna double click it and I've got 400 speed, which I'm gonna leave it at. Max power at 20 is good. Max po min power at 20 is good. However, I'm gonna change, if you come down here, it says lines per inch. I have tested it at 280 and at 300, and in both cases, there's the odd time when you might catch a little tiny piece here and there throughout the letters or the graphic that did not engrave their left. So most recently, I've changed it to 500 DPI. What that does is it creates a much tinier line interval, and so far it's worked. I've used it a couple of times now. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to come back to my cut window and on my CO1, which is my words, I'm going to leave that at 400, but I'm going to put this back to 20, 20. And again, I'm going to change my lines per inch to 500 and okay. So now I'm just about ready to go, but remember we have a circular piece of material and I'd like to get it right centered in that material. So we're going to go back up here to the top to laser tools, drop down to center finder. And if you're not familiar with it yet, I'll put a link here. I believe it was the last video I put out was a bit of a how to on how to use the center finder tool when you're working with circular material. I'm going to get that done right now, but I won't leave it in this video because this video will be long. But if you haven't learned how to use it yet, it's a great opportunity to jump back to this video on my left hand side at the top here. I'll put a link watch that video and then come back to continuing your graphic. I think you'll be much happier with your output if you do. Let me get this done and I'll be right back to you. Okay, I've completed my circle finder. I jog to the center, I click OK. I'm gonna take my cursor and I'm gonna go from the bottom right up and I'm gonna grab a little bit of everything. And I'm gonna go up to the top middle and I'm gonna group that object. I want to make sure that my origin is here in the middle. So if you go across to the bottom right, you'll see that I've set the origin to the middle. That will match the center finder because the laser has now moved itself to the center of my slate coaster. I can now send this file. I'm going to call it uh, sim slate. Click OK. There's the beep. Now let's fire up the laser. Given that you're working with slate, I think it's advisable to wear your laser safety glasses because it's a pretty bright light. First thing I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to set my origin. I then want to frame it just to make sure it's going to fit. Yeah, looks good. And then I want to autofocus. Okay. All right. And now we're ready to run the job. You've probably learned by now that light burn will only work with vector files. So if you've got some kind of a graphic or a design in a JPEG or a PNG or some other format, 
there's another process to be able to import that type of file and alter it to make it an SVG file. For today's video, I just grabbed a simple free graphic. And you're gonna find there's thousands of them on the internet. Different services like Creative Fabrica is one, I think one of the biggest ones or one of the most well-known. You're gonna find that there are free SVG files and you're gonna find that some of them you're gonna to have to pay for or you can get a subscription. The one key I just will bring to your attention is that if you plan on making these coasters or any type of design and you wanna sell them, you'll notice that a number of these different SVG files or these different subscriptions require you to pay more if you're going to use it for commercial purposes. Commercial being you're going to be reselling some object or material with that design on it. Nice. Life is better at the cabin. I wanted to mention a few things about these slate coasters. I mentioned before, you can get them just about anywhere and they're pretty inexpensive, especially when you're just learning and you know that there's gonna be a lot of mistakes at first and they are kind of handy because everybody needs coasters. But as it pertains to these slate coasters, I found that quality is not necessarily a high on the list. You can get them anywhere. You get them in bulk and you get them in four packs or eight packs. But two things I've learned already, just with the few packs that I purchased, is that they're supposed to come with little rubber feet stuck on the bottom because you definitely don't want to be scratching slate across your beautiful end table. But quite often in the package, some won't have feet on them and there's no extra feet in the package. The other thing I've noticed is that your thickness is not necessarily as consistent as you might like. They should all be this thick, which is getting on about a quarter of an inch, but you're gonna find sometimes in the same package, you have different thicknesses, so they're not consistent. So if you are looking at creating a set as a gift, or if you're looking to start selling products online, they're just two things to be aware of. And it also appears to me that this 500 DPI setting that I've been using is much more consistent than the 300. The odd time when I was using 280 or 300 DPI, I found that although it overall looked great, if you look closely, there's the odd little tiny speck or spot where the laser didn't engrave, and it's just tiny dots. But if you wanna do a good quality job and you wanna be proud of the output, you wanna make sure that it's evenly engraved across the front of the slate. And so far, 500 DPI is working pretty good for me. And hey, life is better at the cabin. So I hope today was helpful, especially if you're new to the bolt like I am. I know you're chomping to get that first job out. And today I think the Slate Coasters gives us a great opportunity to practice. We've learned a few things about the speed controls on your bolt. We've learned a couple of new tools in Lightburn. And now you have a place to put that cold beer when you're sitting down to watch the game. Have a wonderful week out there. And I hope I see you on the next one. Cheers.